Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So I recently made a December version of my three stocks monthly series where we learn about three different stocks every month. And in that last video, I asked you guys a question. I asked you if you agree with me that at the moment, there aren't very many good deals in the stock market because we are trading near record highs. And as more of a growth oriented investor myself, most of my personal favorite stocks are trading at very expensive prices at the moment. Well, a ton of you responded. And while many of you uh, do agree with me, a lot of you also mentioned a lot of different stocks that you think are actually trading at attractive prices even at this moment. So I thought it would be fun to do like a very quick rapid fire where I give my opinion on the 10 first stocks that I saw in that comment section and just kind of quickly comment on their valuations, their business performance, and maybe a couple other things like their dividends. But I hope you guys enjoy this. And if you want me to do more videos like this where I kind of connect with you a little bit more, or if you want me to do even a part two of this video uh, where you want me to talk about more stocks, and if there's any stocks that I haven't mentioned in this video that you want me to talk about, make sure you leave them down in the comment section and try to get a lot of likes on them so that it's easier for me to spot them and they'll kind of rank higher and then they'll be in the video. And if you guys want like a little secret on how to get a lot of likes, uh, one easy way is to leave like a very nice compliment about the creator. Those usually get a lot of likes. And of course, if you enjoy the video, please consider hitting the like button as it really helps support the channel. But with all that said, let's go ahead and jump right into this. Okay, starting here with stock number one, we've got a comment from John Jackson who says, I think Six Flags is a good buy, ticker symbol six, monster dividend. Okay, now you've probably heard of Six Flags as they're one of the largest theme park owners in the world with 26 locations in North America and plans to expand internationally as well, including Dubai, Saudi Arabia, and China. However, reading through their annual report, I noticed that they've delayed uh, some of those international expansions because of macroeconomic and political reasons, and that's coupled with a few disappointing recent quarters where they missed analyst estimates has caused the stock to plummet in the last couple of years. Now, because theme parks are extremely seasonal, the stock has been very volatile, but because their overall yearly performance is usually pretty decent, having grown their sales every year over the past decade, their stock has actually climbed in 2015, 2016, and 2017 before falling off a cliff in 2018 and 2019, leaving them only up by less than 7% over the past five years and down by over 40% from their highs. On the bright side though, this does leave them trading about 16% cheaper than the sector median on a forward P basis, while their dividend has also grown uh, to a monstrous yield of over 7.6%. And that's after having grown it for nearly a decade straight with a double digit five year growth rate. So that's very impressive. However, that payout ratio of over 127% does look very sketchy to me. So I wouldn't be surprised to see the dividend get cut if the company doesn't find a way to generate higher cash flows. And with all of the investing necessary to expand internationally, I also wouldn't be surprised if it ultimately becomes a drag on their funds and it gets brought up at a later date, maybe during some kind of earnings call or something like that. Keep in mind that their EPS is expected to drop by about 20% this year before returning to growth the year after, while sales growth is still pretty low at 3% for the next couple of years. My guess is that profits are falling because of those international investments, and that may continue until the global economy improves. I am actually optimistic about that over the longer term, so I can definitely see why people would consider this a value stock at the moment, but I would just be cautious about that dividend. I'd have to research it a little bit more to make sure it's sustainable, which at the moment it doesn't really seem to be. Okay, next up here we have stock number two with a comment from Minds in Motion who says AT&T is one of the stocks I have been buying every chance I get. Well, uh, taking a look at the stock, we can see that they had previously dropped a lot from their 2016 highs of around $43 a share all the way down to less than $30 a share at the end of 2018 and beginning of 2019. And if you haven't seen my videos, that's actually where I decided to buy the stock myself because I thought the valuation was way too low while the dividend was way too high to just ignore. In fact, I currently receive a dividend yield on my stock of about 7% because I bought so low. However, ever since then, the stock has been on fire, climbing by over 
30% in 2019 alone, and as a result, the dividend yield has dropped to less than 5.5%, although that's obviously still very high. And despite the recent rally, the valuation still looks pretty good with a forward P ratio of only 10, which is close to half the sector median. Sales growth isn't looking very strong though due to their legacy businesses like wireline and cable TV doing very poorly because of changing consumer trends as growth is basically projected to be flat and possibly even negative next year. Not to mention that they also have a horrendous looking balance sheet that carries over $165 billion of long-term debt, but considering the growth catalyst of 5G and a new video streaming service called HBO Max, I can understand why some would consider this a good value stock at the moment. I personally think that the stock price is a little too high right now after having already climbed by so much this year and considering the risk that you take with your legacy businesses continuing continuing to struggle coupled with the balance sheets. But again, I can understand why others like it. I likely won't be adding though because it's already my fourth largest stock. Okay, next up here we have a double header with stocks number three and number four who come from Cecilia who says, I've been buying EPD and INMD, all other cash is going to my buy the crash savings fund. Well, I'm very heavy in cash right now as well at close to 40%, but I prefer to call it a correction or a dip fund because I'll definitely use it for any attractive prices that appeal to me. But taking a look at that first stock that she mentions, that's going to be EPD, otherwise known as Enterprise Products Partners, which is one of the largest midstream oil and gas companies out there that generates the majority of its revenue from fees associated with midstream processes like transportation, storage, and processing. Now that does offer a little bit of protection from the volatility of oil and gas prices, but as we can see in the stock that has dropped by about 30% in the past five years, it's really not enough to keep them from being exposed to the industry by a pretty large amount, as oil prices have really struggled in recent years, as you can see on this chart here. On the bright side, their dividend yield is currently sitting north of 6.6% after having already grown in each of the past 20 years in a row, while their forward PE ratio is sitting at less than 12. Now, that's only 4% cheaper than the sector median, but you have to keep in mind that the oil and gas energy sector is already very cheap at the moment as it is, so this would still be considered a pretty low valuation. Still, their business is really struggling at the moment as sales are expected to drop this year by nearly 7% before recovering the year after. So it's not really a great stock for someone like me that is more growth oriented. For growth in energy, I would probably need to look at renewable energy stocks like Next Era Energy, for example, that is expected to grow sales by 16% this year. But the problem with those is that they tend to be very expensive as Next Era alone trades at more than double the price of the oil and gas sector. So when it comes to energy stocks, I'm mostly just out of luck at the moment. But don't get me wrong, I don't think oil and gas is going anywhere, at least not anytime soon, but supply seems to be very high at the moment and they're also likely to be disrupted a little by renewables over the longer term, so I'm just not eager to jump into any of these stocks at this time. But the other stock uh, she mentioned was INMD, otherwise known as InMode, and this is actually a very interesting stock as they only recently IPO'd at $14 a share and have already climbed by over 260% in just a matter of months. Now, if you've never heard of them, they're an Israeli company that performs non-invasive surgeries, including plastic surgeries that have even been used by several celebrities, including Kim Kardashian. That's ultimately led to very high growth for the company as revenue in their last quarter soared by 57% year over year, while net income grew by another 87% as well. And they're still expected to grow sales by another 25% next year, uh, also, unfortunately, it does seem like most of this growth is already priced into the stock as after having already climbed by so much, their forward P ratio sits at over 30. Still, if the high growth continues, today's valuation could end up looking cheap many years from now. I'm not familiar with this company enough or their industry to make a bet on this one after such a huge rally, but it's definitely a stock that I will continue to research further and possibly make a more in-depth video in the future. So let me know if you'd like to see that. Okay, moving on here to stock number five, we've got a comment from Engineer Vets who says, 
dude, Facebook is way undervalued. And while Facebook stock is currently trading very close to record highs and their forward P ratio is about 14% higher than the sector median, I actually agree a little with Engineer Vet. I do think that the stock is fairly valued here and possibly even undervalued from a long-term perspective, given that they're still growing sales north of 20% a year, despite already being gigantic, bringing in over $70 billion in revenue. Couple that with EPS growth of over 20% a year over the next five years, nearly 2.5 billion users just on Facebook alone, strong growth prospects, especially through Instagram, and a very dominant presence in digital advertising, which is a market that will only get bigger and bigger in the future, especially through social media. And I think Facebook deserves to trade a bit higher than the sector median. Not a stock that I own currently, but give me a little dip on this one and I'd be more than happy to scoop up a few shares for the long term. Okay, moving on here to stock number six, we've got a comment from Geisha Secrets who says AMAT was downgraded by UBS and there was an insider sell-off so the price slid down a bit. I've been buying it in small increments, reserving some major buying op. Uh, should the price dip much lower? Happy Thanksgiving. Okay, happy Thanksgiving to you too, by the way. But uh, Applied Materials, so that's a stock that I've always enjoyed tracking because unlike other semiconductor companies like AMD or Micron, who either design or build or even sell their chips, AMAT actually supplies the materials, services, and software that is needed to manufacture those chips. So they're a sort of indirect way of getting broad exposure to the semiconductor industry. Now looking at the stock, from a long-term perspective, I'm actually not seeing a very large dip here. Semi-stocks can often be very cyclical, and it looks like AMAT is currently trading near record highs, which may explain some of the insider selling that the viewer mentioned. Still, even despite the rally, the stock is trading at more than reasonable levels at close to 60% cheaper than the sector. But what you have to keep in mind is that many semi designers and sellers trade insanely high and that's why the sector is so expensive in relation to AMAT. Instead, if we were to look at more comparative stocks like for example, LAM Research, they usually don't trade too much higher. In any case, AMAT does pay a high growth dividend, and when you couple that with double digit revenue growth as well as 23% EPS growth this year, I can see why many would consider this a value play. I just think the semiconductor industry is very cyclical, so I'm not sure that buying at record highs is the best option, but I agree that this is looking like a decent value uh, over the long term. Okay, moving on here to stock number seven, we've got a comment from Jesse who says uh, no, which is in response to me asking if you agree with me that there are not many good deals in the market right now. So he says no, uh, like disagreeing with me. And then he adds, let's go Chesapeake. Uh, also a lot of biotech breakouts going on. Okay, so the biotech comment is a bit too broad for me to comment on, but he did mention Chesapeake. So let's take a quick look at that one. Well, this is another oil and natural gas company, but they're an actual producer and active driller, especially here in the United States. Now, you would think that that's a good thing since the US is now the largest producer of petroleum and natural gas in the world. They're the largest in the world, but the result has ultimately been oversupply and that's caused prices to fall, hurting many of these oil companies. And unfortunately for Chesapeake, they have not been an exception as their stock has been absolutely obliterated over the past five years, crashing by almost 100%, meaning that many investors have lost almost all of their money depending on when they bought and sold the stock. Now, as far as how much their business has suffered, they lost close to $15 billion in 2015 and over $4 billion in 2016 before generating close to a billion in profits in the two years after. But their sales are still expected to decline by 14% this year and over 7% the year after, which is obviously very bad. In fact, things are looking so bleak that their EPS is expected to drop by over 80% per year over the next five years. That's really bad. And even though the stock has crumbled, they still have a negative P ratio because they're not expected to be profitable next year. Needless to say, this stock is way too risky for me to get involved with. I can understand why a low share price really excites people, but this is by all accounts a spec stock and I'm just not seeing much value here. 
All right, guys, moving on here to stock number eight. We've got a comment from Roman who says, check out Funko stock being down almost 50%. Now, they recently IPO'd in late 2017, and I actually really like their products myself. They're mostly a toy maker that makes all kinds of licensed merchandise of popular characters from brands like Star Wars, Marvel, DC, The Office, sports teams, and so on. And their business has actually performed pretty well in recent years with very high sales growth of over 30% last year and adjusted EBITDA growth of 17% as well, although gap net income has been much lower at only 4%, but that's likely because of early growth investing. However, their sales growth is expected to slow down a bit this year to 23% and only grow 11% the year after. And that coupled with earnings and guidance last quarter that both missed analyst estimates has left the bears arguing that the collectibles market is a fad that will eventually die off while global economic weakness will also be a drag since Funko does sell internationally as well. I actually think that internationally is where they're going to tap into more growth in the future since they grew those sales by 57% last year, but I guess anything can happen. In any case, the stock is still up by over 100% since their IPO, but most recently it crashed by close to 50% because of some of those concerns about how sustainable their future growth is. Still, this now leaves them with a forward P ratio of only 10, which is close to half that of the sector median. The stock doesn't pay a dividend, but given the low valuation and high revenue growth, I can see why investors are considering this as a good value stock right now, and I may have to make a deeper video on them in the future. Not buying yet, but they do have my attention. Okay, that brings us to stock number nine with a comment from Dennis DeRuiter, who says, uh, I think Alibaba is still a good buy, but it's already the biggest stock in my portfolio. I also have 3M, but I'm waiting for a pullback before I buy more. By the way, 3M was a stock that we talked about in that video, so I won't regurgitate the same stuff here, but I'll just quickly comment on Alibaba, and I actually kind of feel the same way as Dennis. I think Alibaba is already huge and still has tremendous future potential, but it's also already one of my largest stocks, so I'm not really looking to add any more shares at this time unless it dips a bit more. But looking at them, they're already the largest Chinese e-commerce company with over 50% market share in China while also commanding the most cloud market share as well in the Asia Pacific region, yet they're still expected to grow their sales by around 30% a year in each of the next two years. The stock is currently trading near record highs and their forward P ratio is close to 20% higher than the sector median, but for what you get in return, I actually think that they're fairly valued at this time. Not an amazing deal, but I think over the long term, they'll mostly outperform in my opinion. Okay, and finally, we have stock number 10 with a comment from Michael Brooks, who says great stocks to buy is Altria, ticker symbol MO, always research before you buy, but they have acquired Jewel and are breaking into the MJ industry. Now, I get asked to talk about Altria in like almost all of my videos, but I've never really talked about them because they're one of those stocks that people consider a sin stock because they're the parent company of Philip Morris and are pretty much the biggest US SIG company. I'm abbreviating because of YouTube like demonetization. It's getting to crazy levels, but anyway, uh, that's because of brands like Moral Boro. So I just don't want to deal with like all of the negative comments that I would get if I talked about them, but I'll just quickly give my objective thoughts on the stock right now. So whether I like the company or not, I, I do have to admit that the stock itself does look like a value play at this time. That's because the stock has crashed by around 35% in recent years, leaving them with a forward P ratio that is about half the sector median and a mouthwatering dividend of nearly 7% after having already grown it for over 20 years in a row with a double digit five year growth rate as well. By the way, I'm pretty sure that they've grown that dividend for 50 years, so I'm not sure why Seeking Alpha puts it at 21, but I, I thought I would just mention that. Anyway, they're definitely not without their problems as more people ditch SIGs. Altria's revenue has been mostly flat in recent years and are expected to continue that way at least through 2020, while profits have shrunk in 2017, 18, and in the past 12 months as well. Not to mention that the Jewel investment 
hasn't exactly worked out for them because of the controversies with uh, vapping lately, which I'm obviously pronouncing wrong. But if you're someone who believes in the company and in the investments that they've made into the vapping market with 35% ownership of Juul, the MJ market with 45% ownership of Kronos, and even the Alk beverage market with over 10% ownership of Anheuser-Busch, then right now may look like a buying opportunity to you. Not a company that I'm very excited about myself, but I can under understand why others are interested in the stock. Well, what did you guys think? Are any of these looking like attractive buys to you? Or do you think that there are better stocks out there at the moment? So let me know down in the comment section and especially if you want me to do a part two version of this video, I'd be more than happy to do that. But thanks again for watching and for all the support. Really means a lot to me. Take care. Uh, I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.